Endovascular procedures in neurosurgery involve inserting a catheter at the femoral artery near the groin, navigating it through the aortic arch, the carotid arteries, through these tortuous brain arteries where the target location is, and a number of procedures can be done. Our research provides neurosurgeons with an ability to steer the catheter in any direction they want within the brain arteries, a kind of Nintendo for neurosurgeons. As an open and endovascular neurosurgeon, I think every day about how we get to the deep recesses of the brain and deliver appropriate therapies. That requires tremendous steerability from the catheters that we use. More and more, uh, we're able to actually access those deep regions, but being able to do that efficiently uh, takes a lot of effort and energy. So what we're seeing now, especially with an aging population, arteries uh, under the influence of senescence continue to get more and more tortuous. So we are seeing an increasing proportion of patients whereby our delivery systems are unable to reach the target, probably up to about 20%. Unfortunately, many of the most important blood vessels we might wish to treat are among the most tortuous and fragile in the human body. Challenges we've identified in neurointervention procedures include issues with navigation, access, and stability. So navigation refers to the ability to maneuver your microcatheter chip through complex arterial vasculature in order to reach your target parent vessel location. Current procedures utilize curved guide wire tips in order to provide access into the pathology such as an aneurysm. The issue with that is once you retrieve the guide wire, the catheters typically tend to deflect back into their native position, which is often straight, resulting in a loss of access to the pathology. The issue right now with current procedures is that once you deploy the coil or the stent, the device often provides a force against the tip of the microcatheter, causing it to deflect in the opposite position. With our technology, we can utilize the fluid mechanics of our device to provide an opposing force to the microcatheter tip, preventing this from happening. Although robotics is rising to the need in addressing many medical problems, the formable soft devices at the length scales required for neurosurgery simply do not exist. Given the delicate and nimble surgical environment within the brain arteries, we thought of addressing this unmet need using a material that is soft and deformable in a controlled manner. And so soft robotics, which provides soft, flexible, and highly deformable materials in a controlled manner, provides a feasible solution. The penny dropped when we realized that we could neither use 3D printing, CNC machining, nor use standard microfabrication techniques such as photolithography or microimprinting. At the same time, established players in industry stated that the parts were either impossible or not feasible to make. We custom designed the parts to be at the confluence of microfabrication and soft robotics to build the device. With the initial custom design tooling parts, the process is scalable to meet large volume requirements. The result was bio-inspired. If we look at examples in nature at the large lens scale such as elephant trunks or octopus legs, or at more relevant lens scales such as flagella or insect legs, or, for instance, beetles mating where microscale hydraulics and large aspect ratio deformation are involved. This led us to developing a hydraulically actuated soft robotic microcatheter. I personally believe that increased control and precision in microcatheterization is an important goal for us. And this type of precision can be realized with steerable tools. The successful deployment of these tools should move us forward in permitting improved access, decreased procedural time, better capacity utilization, reduced radiation exposure, and other related and expected benefits. Yeah, the, I think this technology would be, be ideal for a situation that I found myself in the other day. And what was unique about this geometry and angle of incidence is it required me to make a 180 degree turn uh, backwards from where my uh, catheter was in the parent artery. So any uh, technology that would make that easier and maintain position with a reduced kick out would be something that would be very beneficial to the field. I'm really excited about this uh, technology. This is going to ultimately allow us to treat aneurysms and pathologies, AVMs, and even strokes that we haven't been able to in the past. And so it is with um, great hope, joy and aplomb that we see that Gopesh and Dr. James Friend and also his team are putting so much effort and are able to now deliver the prototype of a system which allows us to get through all these very, very windy arteries.